It's an attitude, a new style of service, and if it's done right, it's a license to print money. How do I know? Well, I've spent a ton of money and time being entertained by the man who pioneered this program. Of course, I'm speaking of Scott Young. I remember the first time I saw Scott wow the crowd at the Roxy. As a matter of fact, I think I was one of that crowd. And I knew right then and there that I'd be back. Scott and his instructors travel internationally, speaking at trade shows, putting on seminars, and judging worldwide competitions. Since 1994, Scott has taken the business of great service to a new level, and the fun has only just begun. You may know him as the creator of Extreme Bartending, the video training series that shows you exactly how to put this winning formula to work for you and your staff. But Bar Smart has always been about much more than just flipping bottles. It's about taking care of the customer, having them come back soon, stay longer, and walk away talking about what a great experience they had. Now, if you ask Scott what his company is all about, he'll tell you it's about spreading ideas, getting people thinking about how they can do their job better. The Flair Bartenders Association gave Scott an award for having the most impact internationally as a trainer. Now, I can go on and on about this young man, but I'd rather let you watch this video and decide for yourself. All I know is in the last 10 years, I've watched as his bar had a lineup while other wells in the club stand empty. Proof's in the pouring, and this is Scott Young. Hi, I'm Scott Young. What you're about to see is a little bit different than any other training video you may have seen. I don't know if you've ever seen a seminar or been to a presentation, but I've often found that the instructor is very knowledgeable on the subject, but they stand up and they talk to you or at you for an hour. Maybe they read out of a book and never bother to ask you what you think. Well, I never liked that, and we don't do it that way. We want this to be intimate and interactive. There are very few right or wrong, black or white things in this industry, and we'll discuss them. But for the most part, there are shades of gray. Now, this is a big world out there. This service industry is everywhere, and I can't just tell you what's going to work in your area but we can give you some new ideas and hopefully get you thinking about what will. Whether you're watching this video alone or with a group, it's not really designed to be watched in one sitting. It's not a movie. So stop it once in a while, rewind it, make sure you catch all the ideas. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions, agreements and disagreements, creativity and solutions, ideas, that's what we're all about. You've picked a great industry to be involved in. We want to excite you about it. There's all sorts of opportunities out there for the right kind of person kind of person who's going to care enough about what they do to think about how to do it better and then actually go out and do something about it. Hi, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be discussing how to be more efficient, how to increase your speed, your efficiency, your accuracy uh, while you're behind the bar. Okay, now what kind of things do you think you can do to be faster? What are some things we can do? Graham. Huge thing, right? Now, hold that thought for one second. I want to talk about speed versus efficiency. Two different topics. Now, speed. Do we think pouring a shot or being fast is important? Yes. yes. Totally. Absolutely important. Now, a lot of places in the world uh, are, are going to do things differently. Some places pour shots you know, into a shot glass. Some, uh, some free pour completely. Some have it all out of the gun. Some have uh, uh, a system where you put the glass underneath a bottle where there's a little square thing and you push it up and a shot comes out. Uh, there are some types of spouts that you turn it upside down and only one ounce will come out. Right? So there's lots of different ways of pouring or dispensing this alcohol. Right? And there's, I mean, what's the right way? I don't know. It really depends on that particular market. Right? But I believe speed is important. Right? Now, what I like to do is I want to be as, as fast as I can as long as I'm accurate. Right? Accuracy is more important than speed. Right? Now, I'm not saying that speed isn't important. I think that you should go and, and practice your accuracy. What I do once in a while is I'll go into a bar and grab you know, a bottle of water. Right? And the way we pour you know, in Canada, most places, you, everything has to go into a shot glass. Right? So I will li line up you know, five or six drinks or regular glasses, and I'll pour. Ounce, ounce, double, ounce, half, and I'll go and measure them. Right? In the States, free pouring is very prominent. Right? So people will do the same thing. And they've got uh, something called a, uh, is it, what is it, the pour in, uh, oh, there's a pour in measuring. Measures, yeah. Measuring. Measuring. It, it, it's kind of a cool thing to do, right? But you will go and you'll practice and you'll see how accurate you can be and be fast. So find that line, right? I would rather you be a split second slower but be totally accurate, right? Because we're just talking about a few seconds. Now, here's an example. 
Here's a question. How many seconds does it take to pour a rum and coke on an average? A lot of variables here, but generally. Four seconds. Okay. I think that's really fast. Right? Now, let's say you have to get a glass, right? ice it you know, from the bar, grab your rum, pour down coke, straw, lime. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you can't right. even stop when it I can't do it. I gotta go. Right, but how long does that take? Eight, ten seconds. Eight, ten seconds. Okay, that's about average, I think. Now, of course, if you have, you know, liquor on the gun and pop on the gun, okay. Well, that's maybe a little faster. There's all sorts of different ways of doing this, but generally, we're talking seconds. I think the fastest you're ever going to make it was, you know, five, six seconds. I think that would be very, very fast. You know, and I think the other end of it would be, you know, 15, 18 seconds, sort of taking your time, right? Now, first of all, do you always have to make the drink as absolutely as fast as you possibly can? No. No. Let's look at it in reality. Hey, speed is great, right? But when the bar is relaxed, I'm not very busy. I would rather the bartender look calm and relaxed and cool and have a conversation while I'm doing it. You know, a couple seconds here and there don't make a difference, right? Calm, confidence, style, that's important. Right? But I think it's important that you practice to get your speed up as much as possible, definitely. But what's more important is what Graham mentioned earlier. Say it again. Being organized. Huge. Right? This is, there's so many things that go into but your mind, right? being organized, being more efficient. Right? So what are some things that, that can help you get more organized, save you time, make you faster? Mark. When your drink prices. Sorry? Knowing your drink prices. You can tell the customers so they can have money ready, so when you want the money, they're not oh, exactly. looking for it. So these are all things that we're going to discuss today are about the things that you should know before going, in for your, before going in for your first job or definitely going in for your next shift, things that you really got to know right, by heart. Absolutely know it, because when you stop and think, that's when you're going to cost your time. Now, in a, in a slow place, in a restaurant, maybe during, during the afternoon, you know, you're making you know, 30, 40, 50 drinks an hour. It's not that big a deal, right? But as you start getting busier, right, and even in a slower place, it's going to have a busy period. So you want to be as efficient as possible in that period of time. Right? So what are some things that we can do to be more organized? You said drink, know your drink prices, so such as... Know them too. Exactly. When somebody orders something, you can automatically go, well, you know, 425, you know, whatever. Um, what about multiples of drinks? The more you can do in your mind without having to go to your till or your computer, right, it's going to save you time. Also, I think it's going to make you look a little bit more under control. Russ? That's, that's exactly what I was going to say is less trips. So if you, have, if you can put five drinks in your head and do five drinks for three different people or something like that, of course, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's, one, it's two less trips than you have to do if you just had one. Exactly. You know, and you're, you're doing it all and you're serving a higher volume. Of food. Right. There's a word that describes that. Does anybody know what it is? Multitasking. 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 Yeah. Ian. Actually, uh, I was just thinking um, I can't do math in my head very, very well. So uh, what I generally do is if I made like six drinks, I know that uh, they're about five bucks a piece. What I'll do is I'll go more than 30, less than 50. I'll give you change. <laughs> I do. And, and, and that works. They give you, you know. Or you have some money I'm ready for you. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, sure. That's good because you're not, you know, you're showing you're not perfect, right? But you're telling them what they need to know. Yeah, they're giving you a range. Yeah, give me some money. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Fair enough. Right? And you obviously. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, that's not going to work in like a five star, you know, restaurant and hotel. But you know what? I bet you if you were, you would make it work. <laughs> I would, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? Depends on the situation and the person, right? You're going to be able to get away with that, right? Because you do it with respect. You do it with, you know, making a smile and you're joking. It makes a big difference, right? W -D. Every night is New Year's Eve. You know, prepare your bar accordingly. Just back up everything. Have everything ready to go. Extra limes, extra lemons. Be prepared. Have your juices backed up. Your fast-moving bottles of liquor, maybe an right. extra one with a speed pour on it if you don't have access to a bar pourer that night. That's a great you know, idea. Just think New Year's Eve. Uh, uh, that's a great, because I tell you, that's where you lose money, right, is when your bar's not stocked. And not only you lose money, I think you lose respect to people. You know, it's not good when you run out of, you know, your major things. You just don't look good. Yeah. And especially if you're 
you know, if you're going for a good reputation in your area, you know, of quality, you know, you don't run out of the staples, you know, of the things you go through a lot of, of you know, Bacardi or of, uh, you know, mostly Canadian or whatever happens to be very popular, you know, to your, you know, Bulls liqueur. We do a lot of, uh, a lot of shooters with different flavors of liqueur is really good. Um, you don't want to run out of anything because, boy, if you don't have it, they don't want it, right? They don't want to wait and take the time. And you don't want to take the time to have to go and get it, right? That's going to cost you money. Right, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It's really a point about going and getting it. Um, I know when, when you and I worked together, we never went and got <laughs> anything. Like uh, certain supplies were by certain people in the bar, and if if you needed something, it got thrown to you. You never ever walked over to get it. Yeah. And it's like six feet, but it's it's just that many seconds, right? And, exactly. You know, vodka, snap, bang, next. That's a good point. We're getting a little bit of the performance aspect of it, which is great because in my perfect world, to be fast, be efficient, I want to stand. Here's my well. I want to take one step here, reach, one step here, reach, and that's where I want to move, <coughs> right? If something is further away than that, it's costing me time, it's costing me steps, and if I'm in a busy place, that's going to cost me money, right? So if something's down there, I want to call for it. Plus, I think that's a huge thing, get communication in. Now, obviously, do it safely and learn properly how to throw back and forth. Huge, 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 right? If you don't know how to do it, then just don't, right? But if you're getting people who have some skills, it looks, you know, it looks great, and boy, it's so much faster. You know, when I, what we do with our porters, uh, when I run out of something, you know, I will, I will bang it on the, you know, on the cooler behind me, right? Just even before I run out of it, because I can see it's gonna, I'm gonna about to pour it, and I'm gonna run out. You know, he will, he or she will go and get that bottle, yeah, right? He will, he will, uh, you know, wait for me, right? I'm ready, boom! I will, will throw it usually at the same time, right? I will catch it. I will, I will pop the cap. He will take out the spout. We'll both rip off at the same time, and whew, he throws a spout. Bang, bang, boom, and we're pouring. Never miss I mean, just a beat. Never miss a beat. You know, very impressive, right? But just it saves you time. Yeah. Right? Good, yeah, Jerry. Um, on, this, on the flip side of that coin, I think that you also have to learn how to be extremely self-reliant because there's not going to be, every night isn't going to run perfectly smooth, and your porter's not always going to be around. Right. You know, you need something, you, got, you have to know where it is, what the quickest way to get there, the quickest way to get back, and the quickest way to, to make up for whatever you're doing, right? Exactly. Lemons, limes, you're out. What are you going to do, go rummage in the cooler, or go right next to you, grab half a bucket, dump it into yours there, you've got right. enough until the porter gets back. You have to learn to be extremely self-reliant. Huge word, really well described. You, I mean, first of all, not everybody has the luxury of having a porter or a bar back or a bartender assistant, <laughs> right? Or a busboy that they can call in to help them. A lot of people, boy, your bar is your bar, right? So, first of all, if something bad happens, you run out of something, you know, who looks bad? You look bad, period. You know, I don't want to look bad. You know, I want to be able to give my customers what they want when they want it, right? So, when I get in there, it's my responsibility. Sure, I have the luxury of having porters, and I got exceptional porters. Right? And they make my life so easy. You know, they're the most per important person behind the bar, not us. I mean, if they don't have a smooth night, my life sucks. <laughs> right? And I tell you, I don't like that. I want it to go smooth, calm, relax. I don't want to run out of anything. And I think that comes with communication also. Um, if you have the luxury of having a porter, you know, sit down with them before the end of the night. This is what I expect from you. You know? You know, if you want to, you know, if you do this kind of service, you're going to be paid this much. If you do this kind of service, this is what you're going to be paid. If you decide to do over here, that's what you're going to get paid, and you probably won't be around very long, right? But it's totally up to you, right? And, okay, we got exceptional porters, and, you know, they will make sure that I don't run out of anything. I don't run out of anything. And uh, what's a, actually, Ian, Ian, you'll laugh at this. What do I like to say to porters when something happens? Fix Fucking it. porter. <laughs> no, sorry. Fix it. Yeah. The typical line is fix it, like, uh, Scott, you know, we're out of quarters, and uh, the bar, the, the entire bar is out of quarters. Go through your tips and get some fix quarters. Fix it. Yeah. Or even, there's, you know, there's other ways. You know, there's, there's always another way, and, and uh, geez, you know, the first time I ever heard that, I just about uh, punched the person out that said it to me. Uh, and then eventually it just became like, uh, and it wasn't Scott, uh, eventually it became, you know, okay, fix it. How do I do this? Well, okay, you know, we're right in the middle of seven arcades. At the rocks, you know, like uh, there's an arcade every 12 feet. Yeah. You need quarters, run to an arcade, fix it. But, right. but it's just like that creative problem solving again exactly. and touching back on, on what other people have said. It's just the entire job is just about problem solving. Exactly. You know? And fix it. The responsibility is, is mine, right, when I'm alone. But when I have a porter, someone who, who prepare things, 
that's your responsibility, right? And that's, you know, if it doesn't happen, you know, fix it. You know, find a way to make it happen. Because, you know, my job as a bartender is to take care of the people, right? I don't want to have to worry about these little details, right? And that's what the, the beauty of having a really good, a good porter. You know, they will make your life so much easier and they will make the bar money. If you have the opportunity to get out there and, and you're thinking of maybe, maybe not having them, try it out. I guarantee you, a good porter can make the bar so much money is it make things go smoothly. But getting back to bottom line is it's my responsibility, right? And it's my responsibility to train that porter, right? Because bottom line is I look bad, not him, right? I want to make sure that he knows exactly what I need, right? I give him the opportunity to go out and, and, and do that. So being prepared is huge, right? So what other organizations, what other things can you do? Michael? Uh, I think it's important, obviously, to have everything at your disposal. It's like... Uh, and sometimes you see a lot of bars out there that are set up aesthetically pleasing, but everything isn't within the bartender's reach, so to speak, and they're doing a lot of running right. around, and it, it, you lose a lot of time and a lot of sales. And I like to metaphorically uh, talk about it as being almost a pilot in an airplane. You know, you never see the pilot running down the aisle to uh, change the, the, the wing on the back or whatever. Everything was, is within his disposal nice. and, and can utilize that. And unfortunately, you don't have a lot of times when you're uh, behind a bar, you're not building it from um, the floor up. But if you are, you have the ability or talk to your manager or whoever it may be that has the ability to, there are a lot of things within the business that you could uh, get your hands on to make sure everything is at your, is at your disposal, including you know, racks below you or a beer cooler behind you or whatever it is. To try and you and can change that. Yeah. Right? Keep in mind that a lot of times the bar manager or the owner, they don't have experience behind the bar. Right? They're relying on you to make suggestions. Right? And hopefully if you've treated them well you know, and you have a, response, you have a responsibility, a uh, good responsibility, they will to pay attention to what you have to say right? and be able to change it. You have a lot more power than you might think to make it. And the other word I was looking for, we talk uh, about uh, uh, multitasking, is ergonomic, you know, being ergonomically correct. Uh, basically putting things in the right area so you don't have to waste steps. Right, it's very important. You know what I find the number one thing that you're always running around looking for? You see a bartender that, and it's always slows up time, it's the stupidest little thing in the world, it's having a pen. You yeah. know, if you come to work with five or six, or you buy a massive amount of pens and keep them behind the bar, a pen and an opener, yeah. you know? And uh, I just find a lot of times you see a lot of bartenders running around looking for a pen, yeah. and myself included in the past. Sure. But, uh, and it's unnecessary. It's these little details that we either, you know, take care of or, you know, we kick ourselves because we didn't take care of it. Right? How many things? I like to get a, a deposit on a, on a pen. And then people are like, what? I'm like, hey, I'm happy. you can use it right here. I'm happy to let you use it. Or if you want to take it away. The and they're willing to pay you some money for that pen. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Exactly. You know, I'd like $10 deposit on the pen. But it's just a pen. Well, you see, it's my pen. I'd really like it back. You know, I'm happy to let you use it. But you see, I only, I only have two. Carpenters go to work with hammers. Surgeons right. go to work with hammers. Bring them, bring them, bring them. Because you'll lose them. Yeah. Right? But that, that sort of helped me get them back. And I also have a funny way to sort of make a connection with the customer. It just kind of works, works well. But yeah. Have, have your tools. And every now and then you got a $10 pen here and there, right? Yeah. I get a, I get a $10 for a pen every once in a while. It's not about that. On, on rearranging the bar, I remember uh, walking into a bar and three weeks into it, they had uh, hanging glass racks in front of the uh, front of the bar that were just uh, just horrible and they weren't using them anymore. Mm -hmm. So they were just there in the, in the way. And uh, I remember threatening and saying, you know, um, you know, my, my the owner's name was Vince. And I remember saying, Vince, like, listen, uh, I'm going to take those, I'm going to take those glass racks down. Like they're in the way, and he'd go, ha, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And so one Friday night, he came in at about 7 o'clock, and I'd gotten there at about 5 o'clock, and I was sitting there with the screwdriver, and I was taking these glass yeah. tracks down, and I had all three of them all along the entire length of the bar down and off the bar. I just got rid of them. And he went, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Oh, really? Cool. Actually, that makes me really laugh. Uh, I don't think I've told the story to any of you, but uh, my first job, I worked at a place called Fog and Suds. It's a really busy sort of summer place, uh, a lot of margaritas. And um, I was there. And, you know, I saw some things that weren't working well in the bar, and nobody was really doing anything about it. And uh, I totally overstepped my bounds at this point because I figured, you know, i got to get it fixed. I'm going for the right reasons. Um, but there was a carpenter who came in, and uh, same thing, I had him build me some shelves and do, do, a, bunch, do a bunch of things. And, and uh, now I'm not recommending you do this because, you know, get your manager approval. And I was, you know, young and, young and crazy at the time. But, uh, you know, I ended up getting away, for it, getting away with it because they came to me and they went, did you tell them to do this? I went, yep. <laughs> and I, why? I said, we need them. We really need them. And nobody was doing anything about it. It's costing us sales. And, um, you know, I know I overstepped the bounds. I should have, you know, so get upset with me, you know, uh, fire me if you want. But, you know, it's going to make your bar better. 
So I, I stepped over the line. I apologize, but I did it because the bar needed it. Anyway. All right, good job. You know, because at that point in time, you know, things were falling through the cracks. So again, you know, careful, way gray area. And I, I know I could have been fired because I totally overstepped my bounds. But uh, it worked out in that same situation because I wanted to make sure that the bar worked well. Right. What are some other ways that we can be more organized? Clint? Knowing your bar, knowing where everything is. Like, uh, you're reaching behind you. I notice a lot of times when I watch you, you just grab something, you know it's vodka, you know it's Blue Cruzo down over. Um, knowing where your shaker is, knowing where your strainer is. Yeah. Big one. A lot of people like always search for the strainer. Right. Why? Simple, simple things, but know where everything is. Don't have to stop and think. Uh, like, time me on this. Okay, I start to go for, for, you know, for a bottle, and I'll go, how long did that take? Three Four seconds. seconds. Three seconds? Wow. But boy, it felt like an eternity. And it probably looked even longer. Right? Not that long. In seconds. Right? When we were talking about the speed of making a drink, four, five, eight seconds, not a big deal. Between really fast and, you know, and, and, pretty, and pretty slow. All of a sudden, I stop and I look like I don't know what I'm doing. Or like, I'm not sure of where to go. Those moments add up. It gives people a bad impression. Right? And it's going to slow me down. Right? I don't want to have to stop and think about, it, about anything. I want it to happen naturally. So I can focus on the more important things, which is taking care of my customers and dealing with them, standing around talking to them, telling stories, listening to stories. Right? You know, that's what I want to be spending my time in. You know, if I have the luxury of having a porter, they take care of the details. Right? Just because I'm standing there not physically doing anything doesn't mean I'm not doing my job right? because I'm taking care of the customers. Right? Jay? Take the time at the start of the... Sorry, take the time at uh, the start of your shift to uh, customize your well. Yeah. Like, come in two minutes, it might be crazy, but just like that, a stitch in time saves nine, right? Yeah. You, you just set it up exactly how you want it. You never have to deal with it again for the rest of the night. Yeah. Nothing's in your way. You know where everything is. Exactly. So and also, uh, communicate with your porter. Tell them where you're going to be putting your, your cleaning the, the bar top, where you're going to be keep, keep putting your uh, dirty glass yeah. and stuff like that. What kind of systems do you have in place? You know, how do you communicate? Really, really important with your bus people, you know, with your porter. I mean, it's so important. But, you know, it's your responsibility, and that's the main point of this. If you want to be efficient, you want to be fast, take control, right? You're responsible for your bar, not the bar manager, right? You. And you're the one who's going to look bad if it doesn't go smoothly, right? Personalize your bar. Personalize, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, another thing is uh, just never, ever touch a bottle twice in the same order. Makes totally. no sense, eh? Exactly. Uh, this place I used to work in in Hawaii, uh, it was called the uh, Hot Rods, actually. Um, but, uh, That's my favorite bar in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and sugar. I don't think it's there anymore. Oh. A uh, guy named uh, Freddie Peluso oh. owns it. He owns a Scruples. Check that out. I think that's still there. It's in Oahu. But uh, I worked at a place. It was, it was really busy. There was five waitresses that I had to deal with, as well as my bar. Craziness. Well, they had a specific call order for the waitresses, like 17 items. Boy, it had to be exactly in that order, uh, as well as a certain type of liquor in a certain order, right? So there's no time wasted. Right? So now I can pick up a bottle. If I can get my glasses up, you know, I know rum. I'm going to rum, rum, nope, nope, rum, no, away. I know that these other eight drinks don't have rum in it, right? So I can go to the next one, vodka, and go on that. It, just, it makes it easier when you're fast, when you're really, really busy. And that can make a big difference. Also, another idea is to, if you have multiple bars in your establishment, Set them up similarly, or almost exactly the same if you can. That way you have the option of having one bartender go to another bar and be comfortable there right, if you need to. Now, on that note, I generally believe in consistency. I really think you should put the same bartenders at the same bar consistently because I want, different places in different rooms have a different feel. You know, and they have different kinds of people who go to them. And I want to be able to create a consistency like you know where I am. You know, for, for the Roxy, I'm always at the front bar. Unless I'm covering for somebody, right? I'm almost always, always, always at the front bar, right? And I want to be seen when the, when the people walk in through the door. I want, I want to be able to greet people, right? I want to have that option. And uh, for many, many, many years, I used to always insist upon having opening shifts, right? Because I wanted to be the person that they saw when they came into the bar, right? Now, later on, I've, you know, gotten really busy. I, I take the later shifts, but I'm still at the very front bar. Right? Because I want, I know that I'm going to give exceptional service, right? And don't just take for granted that your bar is going to do well. Right? Go out and make a difference, right? So, what are some other ways you can be organized? Just, just having your bag shelf organized as, as 
You know, simple as that sounds. You know, your rums with your rums and your eyes with your eyes. You don't need a bottle of Crown Royal in between your blue cure and your banana with your Right. Eye. And also, when a customer is looking back there for an upsell, he can group stuff together too. Exactly. And that's good for business. Yeah, keep it clear. Uh, another thing, just for aesthetic wise, just have your spouts in the same order. You know, it just looks cleaner. Right? Instead of not, you know, all sorts of different ways. Right? Really good point. Chris, you had a point? I was just going to say groups of drinks, uh, two things. One thing, make sure you have a home for your rag. A lot of bartenders have rags everywhere, three dry ones, and me included. Yeah. And so that's one thing. And then uh, when you're making groups of drinks, get all the glassware at once. Three short glasses, three double glasses, yeah. and a tall. Yeah. And so that way you can just make your trip, get your handful of glasses, and then look yeah. at the bill. Like if I'm serving a waitress or a right. large group, I'll just look, think about the glasses first. Yeah. Because I know all my liquor and juice is here. Right, exactly. Bring what you need to the bar. Right, uh, and you'll probably do your like in, in call orders for waitress. I mean, you know, beer, like bottled beer, it's a good thing to do first, right? And last January would be like your blended drinks or your ice cream drinks or you know or your draft because you want to be fresh. But first thing after that, I mean, get your glasses up there, because also once you ice them, it does what? Chills. Well, it chills them, yeah. But once all the glasses are set up, right, and you look at your order or your orders in your mind, maybe you got a big order, different drinks go in different glasses, don't they? Mm. Well, it helps you remember them. Right? So you're faster. Again, these things, when you're busy, they make a difference. You know, they'll help you go faster. Jerry, another for you. Sorry. Uh, no, hey, it's good. Play. Um, when you're done with it, put it back because other people have to use it. You know, there's yeah. nothing I hate worse than having to look around. Where's the Stoli? Who's got the Stoli? And going through everybody's ice while <laughs> find, you know, there's four bottles of Stoli and somehow one bartender has, has them all in as well. So. Weagle. Well rat. Yeah. Well yeah. rat. Weagle, Weagle well. Weagle Everything well. on the ice. Weagle well. Weagle well. Weagle well. Weagle well. Weagle well. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Now, we don't want to beat up on Weagle. Weagle was a great bartender and a good friend. You know, but he just seemed to really like being a pack rat. I mean, everything, when, if, if the bottle's missing, you couldn't find it, check as well. Because you know, you know you had it. Well worth for the well rat. Yeah. And it just slows things down. Right? You know, because you have to stop and look for something. Right? How Rest. about uh, care of your refuse, like uh, your glassware and all the garbage and stuff that's uh, on your bar when you go and clear it away, rather than throwing it somewhere, just take that extra second and put it in properly because that's going to save you time. Like if you're going over to do it again, which you have to do all night, you're not going to fly over on a bottle or something. Or yeah. Anything crazy like that, which I see a lot of. Like stuff lying on the floor and garbage and... Yeah, I try to organize it. Yeah. Right Good, yeah. And the kind on the same topic is just basically it's clean as you go. You it's what? what? I mean? Clean as you go. Yeah. Like uh, I, one bad thing is if you come up to an empty stool and there's already like spilled drink all over and empty glasses and stuff in front of you, you know what I mean? Like. Right. As a bartender, you know, you're there, might as well take it as you, yeah. you know, the few extra steps, you know, you're right there, like, get rid of it, take care of it, it's all, that's why I clean as I go, you know. Right, both hands. Hands yeah. in, hands out. Hands in, hands out, right, yeah. standard thing, but great. Um, you know, if you're going over here, and, you know, you walk back over there, you got nothing in your hands, well, think about what you could be bringing, right? Michael. Um, I did some consulting for a guy once, and I was in his bar, and he said to me, he was the owner, and he didn't know a lot about the bar business, he said, Michael, I need to uh, speed up uh, the drink service on my, on my bar, and I need every customer to drink more. And I looked at this bar, and I looked at a couple of things, and I said, well, that's pretty easy. I can uh, double the speed of your bartender and make every person in this place drink twice as fast for under $10 for the rest of this bar's eternity. And he looked at me kind of shocked, like, how are you going to do that, golden boy? And uh, I said, well, simple. He had a scoop behind the bar that I swear was a baby scoop. You know, it's like dishing out, uh, filling your glassware with uh, a spoon. Right. So, uh, uh, as opposed to having to fill, basically take this one small scoop and fill a glass two or three times, I mean, we've used a very, very large scoops where you can ice down four glasses at a time, and it yeah. sounds silly, but it, yeah. I mean, double the speed of that bartender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the second thing was he had those really, really small little straws, yeah. which is my pet peeve, and always been, yeah. I think it's the, uh, I can always tell if a bar manager is any good or not, if the place has the really thin straws, you're basically encouraging uh, or telling the guest uh, to take your time. Take your time yeah. and drink, and we're going to make it difficult for you to have a drink. Yeah. You know? You're going to have to really... <laughs> so, and I never understood why people want to make it difficult for someone to have a drink. So. Those are great points. Excellent points. And he was like, I never thought of that, and it really was common sense. That makes me laugh. I worked for Michael when he owned his own restaurant for, for some time, and he just had the biggest goddamn straws. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> like a good, a good half inch width, you know. <laughs> Excellent. My drink's gone. Need another one. Uh, Gee, what a surprise. Exactly. Really good. Excellent. Any others? How can you be more organized behind the bar? Where things are 
really going to make a difference would be you being more efficient. Chris? Um, utilize your support staff constantly. I get sad, but it's more just a statement. Yeah. Utilize the people around you, whether it's the management, the waitresses, whatever. Stay there. Yeah. Keep serving. Get people to delegate. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And the big thing is, is, is having your manager, having your floor manager around and able to go get you change. Uh, and that's sort of been a pet peeve of, uh, of a lot of, of the guys that I've, that I've talked to that, you know, a floor manager, a good floor manager stays around and helps the servers, right? Manages the floor. Exactly. Take care. And mainly, you're just around and, I mean, you don't bother anybody. You're just there. If we need you, you deal with this, can you get me this, can you get me that, whatever. Or if there's something, you know, that really goes wrong, I don't want to lose a bartender to go and deal with that. Right, because that costs everybody money and makes everybody wait, and just bad things start to happen. Right, that's what the manager is there to do, the floor manager. Well, the floor manager is the only person in that bar not making any profit. Exactly. You're just expending it, making more. Yeah. So make sure you're anticipating your problems as they're coming, right? And delegate them to the right person. Right. Don't you don't have to always do that yourself. Right? There are people who can help you with that. Jerry. Keep track of your tabs. Yeah. On a piece of paper, or something. I mean, I work in a pretty credit card heavy bar. We usually right. have like about 80 credit cards behind the bar in a night, <laughs> if not more. And plus all the personal tabs of the management and people like the construction guys who come in and right. upkeep and stuff like that who have promo tabs and managers from other bars. And we always have to write them down on a big list on the side. Right. Keep them well organized. You know, the minute that list goes list missing, everybody's like, oh, where's DeGrazio's tab or where's Gregor's tab or what right. the number is, you know? Right. Just be consistent on that. Okay. So Keep yeah, them organized. Just be good with your till. This yeah. brings me to the next point is know your till. Yeah. I mean, do you, have a, do you have a speed board? Do you have a computer screen? Whatever. Do you, I mean, you talked about knowing your drinks or your drink prices. Well, do you know where it is on there? Because you finally turn around and go, well, I, uh, I'm not really sure what button to push. Well, then you're wasting time. That's easy, three, four, five, ten seconds, right? Really easily, right? And now you're standing there not doing anything, which, again, gives people a bad impression, I, I believe. On that note, I was working at, I was at a bar once, and uh, I asked the bartender, bring out a pint of Canadian and cash it out. And I counted, and he had to hit 12 buttons to ring wow. in a pint of Canadian and cash it out. And I turned to the manager and said, this is wasting a lot of dough here because yeah. it's taking them a long time just to ring in the drink. Exactly. Exactly. And these POS systems are always purchased by the manager, the owner, whoever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're generally looking at systems that have back to house ability with porting and everything else, which is great. Right. But stop you there. Back house, what you mean is talking about being of the inventory control. Inventory, yeah. reporting, <coughs> sales, all that kind of thing, which is very important, obviously, to have an efficient bar. But if you can combine in technology today, if you can combine a back of house POS system that is efficient and bartender friendly in the front of house, yeah. quick for them, um, obviously, I mean, that's what you're looking for. Exactly. So. Especially, I mean, every place is different, really. I mean, when you're doing it in, in a slow restaurant, that's not as important. I mean, obviously, 12 is exorbitant <laughs> buttons, my God. But, you know, the fast place is drink cash. Drink cash. That's what I want. You know, for a, for a busy nightclub, definitely. Right. Right. De Interesting enough. We've all had to deal, you were saying, with visas, and now we have that wonderful interact out there. But if you have a machine behind your bar, teach your porter, if you have porters behind the bar, how to process right. credit cards and, and, and right. interest. Right. You know, and so that you can, uh, yeah. you know, customer gives you a debit card and, and you just bought two bottles of Canadian, and you just give the interact card and just follow my porter up the other end and he'll take care of you. Yeah, you know, I have a, a really good suggestion on that, and we do this at the Roxy. So this is not that I came up with this necessarily, but um, we have a interact machine in the club, yeah. right? Because I have bank machine. Because I don't want my bartenders to be wasting time going and giving cash out for people, right? Like if you know, here it's right there. Make it totally accessible. It's like it's a great, you know, it's full of cash, no problem. You know, but I don't have to waste time. You can say, yeah, it's right there for you, no problem. Get as much cash as you want, and I'm right here. Yeah. Right, really works well. Yeah. Talking about speed boards actually, actually kind of ties into you know what questions you asked at, at an interview. Uh, the first thing when I got interviewed at the Roxy, they said, uh, they said, yeah, we're going to have you start at some point. I said, great. Do you have a copy of the speed board? Excellent. Yeah. Huge. And I like I memorized the speed board, right? By the time I walked in first night, I knew where everything was on the speed board. Huge. Huge. I mean, that's such an important thing because you're going in prepared. First of all, what are you going to think of that as a manager? Like, to ask for that. Well, wow. Hey. Respect for that. And when you come in, all of a sudden, you're not like somebody that we're giving a chance to. Right? Because that's not what bar manager in the business of doing. Right? We hire you because you're solving my problem. Right? Right? I don't want to have to babysit you or have to w have you work in. Now, sure, you're not going to know everything going right off the bat, but you know what? You can sure know a lot. Right? That's a huge thing. Good for you. What else do you need a copy of when you 
Drink list. Drink list. Is yes. there any specific ways that you would like me to make these cocktails? All right? I have my own ideas, I have my own list, but you know, every place is different. There's so many out there. Right? How do you want me to make it? Huge. Anyone have consistency from bartender to bartender? Very important. Right? What else? What are some other ways that you could be more efficient behind the bar? Or Using the downtime effectively, like when you're not busy, mm -hmm. to you know, to prepare for the busy times. So those big yeah. pushes you get, you know, close don't, to last call. Don't get uh, lulled into a false sense of security. Right. right? Yeah, a lot of places, you know, they do that. Oh, it's mellow. And all of a sudden, boom. No, that's the time to restock to make sure you got everything because it's your responsibility. Huge, huge. Mike? Um, I read somewhere one time that 85% uh, of people in the service industry are in a bad mood because their feet hurt. <laughs> because if your feet hurt, your back hurts, your leg hurt, we're, right. saying, we're on our feet 8, 9, 10 hours. Maybe it's not so much an efficiency issue as it is perhaps a guest perception or whatever, but I think it's important to have good shoes or a bar mat back there. Make it comfortable for yourself. There's nothing worse than being behind the bar that isn't comfortable physically to be behind yeah. on your feet. Absolutely. Um, we saw there was this poster sitting in, a, in my old bar and uh, it says things I've learned over life and it's like seven-year-old kids, 11-year-old people and there was a, one, an 86-year-old woman. She sat there and she said, I would have like, what did you learn over life? She said, I would have worn a more comfortable pair of shoes. She's 86 years old. She didn't care where she's wearing stilettos, big high <laughs> heels or anything like that. She just wanted a pair of Nikes. Like, It's yeah. <laughs> a totally good point, though. Like, I know I'm bitter at the end of the night if I work in a bar where the, the speed rail is at the wrong height yeah. and it pushes against yeah. my knees. <laughs> Kill me. And I'll be in a bad mood that fast if that's, what, if that's the case. There's some things we can control. We obviously can't move the bar width back physically or whatever, but... I mean, if you can go invest yourself a $120 pair of shoes that are comfortable and, you know, you're happy when you're behind the bar, put a $20 mat down behind the bar or whatever. Yeah. Save some breakage of glassware, too, but... Uh. Definitely. Right. Chris was sort of cringing at me about the, the, the level of that. <laughs> I've made a debate. What does it matter? Don't lean against it. Can't help it. Because <laughs> at one point we, we switched the well, uh, uh, the rail, and there was like an edge sort of that it stuck in, so it just stuck into my legs. Right. It was like, a stronger like, one because no. you go through them so fast. Though. Oh, yeah. Whoever makes them should make them properly. Hard, hard metal yeah, instead need, of this tin or whatever they're using. They so need we, to be like half inch we had them made. Yeah. And they're hard as rock, but they have a lip that comes in a square. Yeah. So it doesn't bend when you lean against it. So at the end of the day, he's got bruises across his leg yeah. from it because it's so hard and he's leaning into it like before. It's, yeah. Yeah. So we don't like that. That's what you can do after bartending. Someone could make those and sell them to bars. There's a, yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> without sounding melodramatic, the most, you know, we're talking about POS terminals and, and having our shelves set up right and our beer fridge set up right, but the most important tool, I think, two tools when you're bartending is your body. You know, you need to be physically fit and mentally sharp. Yeah, you're too You know? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. You know? I, uh, I think in a nightclub on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night when you're smoking busy, it is an athletic event. Absolutely. You know? You know? And yeah. Chris will attribute, or anybody <laughs> else like myself that is into, uh, into, into cardiovascular exercise, the fitter I am from you know, riding my bike or running, the better I feel behind the wood. No question. And the more endurance you have, you can pull it off right till two. Right. And Actually, I'm really, really glad you brought that up. Um, you guys know that I've written a, written a book, and we're going to be publishing that in the next few months. And I have a little bit on health, right? Because I really believe it's important, right? It's, it's not a standard thing, you know, but it's important. If you want to have the energy all night long, like how long are our shifts? Six or eight hours, right? In a busy place, we're not taking breaks. You don't have a half an hour or an hour for, for lunch and, you know, two, 15 minutes. It doesn't happen, right? Because that's costing me money, plain and simple, right? So I don't take that. I go to the bathroom. You know, once in a while I'll take a break if I absolutely have to, but pretty much I'm behind the bar for, you know, that six or eight hour period, right? And that's draining, right? Especially to do the kind of bartending that I do. And I really want to put out energy, right? And especially all the things that, you know, we're all going. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a workout. It's an aerobics yeah. all night long, definitely. So some of the things that I, I recommend, you know, no, just, you know, be healthy, eat as, eat as well as you can. Uh, I have uh, some shakes, actually. <laughs> Chris, a shameless plug for you. Uh, the company Sunrider, there's all sorts of like Chinese herbs and, and stuff. And I have a shake every morning uh, that I have from that. And I usually have one at work as well. Right? So I have some good things going through my body. Right? And I have some energy. Having something every, every sort of three hours is, is fuel. I'm giving myself fuel so I can do that. I also have a nap every night before I go to work. Right? If, I'm, if you're working late nights, boy, if I don't have my nap, I'm not the same bartender. Just not. 
And I'm like, oh, I start to drag. I don't quite make it through the night. Um, health is extremely important. Um, you know, some people, you know, get through the night, you know, drinking. Well, you know, that's, uh, that'll last for a little while. But, uh, you know, if you're healthy, have some sort of a, you know, a, some fruit or uh, juice or whatever. But, you know, give yourself some fuel to make it through the night. Yeah. Totally believe in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other ideas? Yeah, just I noticed, you know, as you guys, we talked about earlier, we just bought and renovated a nightclub. And it was from 9 in the morning till 3 the next morning. And then every day there was no naps. There was no sleep. <clears throat> my diet went to pot. I lost all my exercise program, you know, because you were, we wanted to get the club right, right. up and running. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I could tell. What did I do wrong? You said what? Well, he said pot. He said pot, yeah. He was in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can totally tell at the end of the night until, you know, you get yourself fit again and up and running, and uh, now it's back in the groove. It's really nice. Excellent. Yeah. What are some other ways we can be more efficient? Jerry? Jerry? <laughs> Jerry? Do you have anything to share with me? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I know Chris talked a little bit about ice. Um, when I first came on, I was working with this bartender named Beefy, and he told me always that ice is profit. The more ice you put in here, the quicker, you know, the less liquid you'll have to put into it, the faster you get the drink out. And they drink, and they drink it They drink it way faster. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, two hands. Using using your left hand, your weak yeah. hand, always, always two hands. Totally. Something you stress a lot, too. Totally agree with. Yeah. Uh, i got to just uh, shameless plug for bar smart and stream bartending. Don't make you know, me hug you. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but by flipping and learning to flare and, and you're using both hands at the same time, I found that it made me more ambidextrous and more efficient with yeah, my hands. Definitely. Yeah, because you 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 acquire better hand hand eye coordination. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I agree with that. I feel I, I'm more comfortable picking up anything. Yeah. You know, and I go faster with it. You know, whether I'm throwing in the air or not. It, yeah. and, and if you're about to drop something by accident, you don't even shake it. You, it doesn't touch the ground. You, yeah. You pick it. You know, cool. you pick it Thank up. You. Yeah. I think it honestly actually has affected my brain in that I can think about more than one thing at a time now. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Because lots of stuff going on. It sounds like it. Like I have no problem, you know, talking on the phone, doing this, and and doing just doing like four things at once. Every you do this. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> EverQuest is an online computer game for those of you guys who don't know. Uh, and it's uh, EverQuest.com. It's wicked, and you play a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> Come play with us. <laughs> I'm, I'm Shendar. <laughs> My bartender, I'm not a priest. All right. All right. You're <laughs> mental. I'm, I'm okay with that. You know. All right. Any other? Uh, any other? <laughs> one one, one uh, side note is that as soon as I started bartending and became a little bit more efficient after doing it three, four, five months, I've got to have the most highly organized refrigerator that I know of. Like, can you guys attest to that? You know, it's only one step for the ketchup. You know what I mean? The milk is always right there. You know, if you're, you know, pineapple juice is in behind because you always have that for breakfast. But you always. Start thinking that way. Yeah. It's hard to get out of you it. You buy groceries and you bartend. You don't, you <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you start flipping, ketchup in the in the super supermarket. Yeah. Shampoo in the shower. Right. I don't know. I don't know. It gets it gets you know very addicting. Actually, I got to tell one story. Touch off to touch off topic. Um, had a guy who was uh, helping us do some promo videos at one point, and he brought some of our our TV interviews back. And one of the songs that was on there was "Whoop, there it is, Whoop, there it is." He had like a three-year-old son who saw it like the night before he was watching it with him. The next day, gave him a bath, and the kid was throwing shampoo balls, going "Whoop, da da da, Whoop, da da da." Ex extreme bath tender. Nice, nice. So it's addicting. Don't start. No, don't stop. If you want to give a liquor store manager a heart attack, go in there and start uh, spinning his 94 Behringer as you're walking down the aisle. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's a good place to practice because if you break a ball in liquor stores, that's right. We got that story. All right, wrapping up. What sort of, what tools do you always have to have to make sure you have to, you know, a good partner? Always has. Your bottle opener. Bottle opener, definitely. Pens, lots of pens. Zippo. Zippo lighter, absolutely. Z got to have a cool lighter. You know, can't just have a little Bic. Nothing against Bic company. I'm sure they're all nice people. Zippo, <laughs> Zippos are cool. All right, Business go get cards. a Zippo. Business cards. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that in another video, but definitely. Rag. Right. Rags. Clean bar rags. I always got one in my back pocket. 
right? And I got a stack of them. You know, and I'm always telling my porter, get me more. That's all there is. Fix it. <laughs> I've learned a great way with the rags as well. Mark showed me it. You just tuck it under your belt, like one ha like half of it's over your belt and half of it's under. So you just wipe your hand off because you're always shaking people's hands if you're doing it properly. And uh, I want clean hands, so I just wipe it off. Yeah. But that's your dry rag. And then underneath is dry. And, the other yeah. dry. and just stock your bar, like we said earlier. Make sure you've got everything you're going to need for the night and then some. Because right? you got room, use it. Right? When you walk away from the bar, it's going to cost everybody money. All right. Any other ideas? I think, Ian? I think, uh, I think that uh, constantly uh, like evaluate how it's going. I think it's important that uh, you, know, you get into a habit of going into the same bar every single night, and you think, uh, no, we've got a good system here. But if you notice something like on the spot that, you know, hey, you know what, this would be better here, just change it on the spot. Constantly, constantly, constantly yeah. evaluate because, you know, the, you know, the high seller items change and, yeah. and things, things change over time. And, and if you notice something, just fix it on the spot, right? Definitely. Yeah. Chris, you had a comment? Uh, just to um, keep your uh, back straight. And when you go down into the cooler, use your knees and, uh, yeah. and yeah, dance. Yeah, bed, yeah. yeah. Be careful. Yeah. And dance of the bar. You don't plunder and clomp your way to the fridge and then clomp your way back yeah. to the wall. But just, you know, move around it. I move find around. I'm always, like, I'm always having my knees bent. And this is a big thing we get into when we're talking about flipping or teaching. I'm always sort of moving, right? If I'm bending my knees, using my entire body as a, as a cushion, Right, as a shock absorber. When I'm flipping, first of all, that's going to really minimize my mistakes because if I don't get it there, I can always come down. Right, I can be smooth with it. But also, that makes it easier on my body all the night long. And I'm more mobile. Right? I can move from one place to place, right? and it's smoother for me. Right? That's a big thing. A um, couple of things I want to touch on quickly is you know, information about your bar. How long has it been there? What's the history? Who are the managers? Who are the owners? Sorry? Phone number. Address. Address. Phone number. Addresses. Fax number. Right, all these things. You know, who's the, who's the manager in charge of hiring, in charge of you know of different things. You know, information on your establishment. Is there any sort of interesting history or lore or rumors or whatever? What's what's cool about your place? What was it before? You know, that could be very important if you're a new establishment. You know, telling people about it. Um, you know, understand the history of it. Um, also, talk about you know what policies and procedures. Again, we're talking about how to be faster, more efficient. Understand how your management wants you to deal with situations, right? How do you deal with, well, there's, there's a broken glass in my drink, you know? How do you deal with, well, it's the wrong mix? How do you deal with, uh, I mean, what are some other things that you, you do? Because the beer's flat. I don't like this. Um, you know, you know it's, the person called me names, <laughs> right? These things happen. This is reality. How do they want you to deal with them? And there's all sorts of ways to do it. Right? And maybe you might not be the person to deal with it. Fine. But know that. Right? So then you can handle it smoothly. You don't stop and go, uh, I don't know. Right? I'm not saying that not knowing is a bad thing. But there's a lot of things you can know before you go into your bar. And everything's going to go much smoother. You know, again, freedom from worry. Right? W.L., you had a point? Oh, you know, just talking about the tools. You know, we have our opener and our wine cranks and our pens and our lighters. But I, I've always said the most important tool that a bartender has is yeah. Shaking the hand. Right there, man. Yeah. Just Huge. welcome people. Huge. You know, and you never leave it at home. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't lend to friends. Yeah. <laughs> Greet them, yeah. say goodbye, invite them back. Yeah. You know, again, super customer service. That's great. Make them feel welcome. Um, you know, it's really important. On, on that, um, sort of my own personal thing is I greet them, hello, and on the way out, I say goodbye and it's two hands. That extra touch is that extra effort. Oh, I know it seems weird, but if I go like this and I say, how you doing? Or if I go like this and like not being cheesy like that, but <laughs> hey, it was great to meet you. I'll see you again. You know, and it's, a, it's just that final, really I will. Like yeah. it's right. it just for me. And I know that everyone comes in and you always shake everyone's hand. You're always so nice to everybody. And it takes two seconds. Yeah. But you yeah. just touch them twice and they remember that, you know? Right. But just wrapping up here, I want to make sure that the main thing is that we think. That's all. You know, we think about what we're doing. Can we be better at what we do? Can we be more efficient? Can we be faster? Right? Think about it. That's your most important tool is your mind. Right? Any other questions, comments, observations? Uh, in regards to that, everybody talked about stocking and organizing the bar, and it's right. real easy to do that at 5 o'clock on a Friday night when you're looking at your bar and the big guy is there and he wants to go home. 
I've always implemented behind the bar a, a, a day stock procedure or whatever it may be, almost a checklist virtually yeah. day and night for the bar, to, for the team. So it creates uh, that team concept and everybody's involved because I've worked day bar before too and it's all, I've always took pride in leaving my bar in uh, great shape for the night guy. Mm -hmm. And what always helped me to do that was this quick little stock sheet, almost on a clipboard or a thing, boom, 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 boom. I've checked this, I've prepped that, I've done this, this is available, this is sitting here, this has been done, this has been checked. Yeah. And in my mind, I walk away from that bar going, Everything on that checklist is checked or stocked or numbered. Right. And if it's not, we'll put it on there and make changes as you go. And I right. think that's a really useful, it's always worked very well. That's for really it. good. Also, you know, what you're out of. Yeah, an 86 list. Yeah, and any little quick notes you want to put on there. For right. the day, uh, uh, we call them right. Q notes, but basically right. notes that you want to make uh, relevant to the bar that day or what's happening. Excellent. A couple other things. Is there any specials that evening? Right. What are they? Is there, a is there a party going on? Is there an event happening? Right? What's going on uh, you know, in your neighborhood? Can you send people to other places? Can you answer questions? Can you hold a conversation about what's going on? All these little tiny things will save you time right? and give the customer a much better presentation of you on your bar. One last one to wrap up. To wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, can you stand up this time? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Russ. Yeah. Yeah. The personal er, preparation, yeah. and I think in my in my experience, when I relax, I'm really much faster. Yeah. And when I'm all nervous, everyone's watching me like now. <laughs> I usually, we'll drop something, and I'll have to clean it up and spend that extra ten minute or well, one minute or so to do that. So relaxed, along with your personal preparation. Cool. Now, what makes you relax, though? Myself. And your organization. And you're organized, and you're prepared. At least that's what I feel like. I remember when I was going through school, you know, if I was going for a test and I wasn't prepared, I hadn't studied, I was just like, well, same thing with bartending, but even more important, because all of a sudden I've got all these people who are going to notice that I screw up and I'm not really on the ball, right? And that's totally my fault, and I hate making those kind of mistakes, right? Because I could have fixed that by just taking time to think about how I could do it better and then taking a few easy steps, like a little of my time when I have the time. Thank you very much for coming. All right. I think actually the most outstanding service I've ever had is at the Roxy. Everyone, when you go there, you're felt welcome immediately. Uh, they usually buy you a drink, they play a game with you, they include you and the people you're with incorporate you into the club, the energy, they, they give energy to you to create energy and uh, the service is quick, efficient and uh, it's, it's excellent. Uh, do you have any advice for someone who's thinking about getting into the service industry? Yeah, uh, don't take yourself seriously. Stop it. Don't, uh, don't get into this. Don't become a bartender because of all the girls and the fast cars and the money and the lifestyle. Get into it because you like it. You like the people. You don't. And, and you like the girls. And you like the girls. It, it comes with it, but one begets the other. You know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the karma thing and, and whatever karma is. I don't know, but everyone uses it. But you be good to people. You spread that goodness. It comes back to you. You treat people great. They will treat you great. If you get a good tip from somebody, you go out and give somebody a good tip in return it all comes back and forth to you that way. That, that's the advice I would say. Don't take yourself seriously. Don't try to be the cool or the good looking guy. Just be the bartender and be the fun service giver and have fun. Uh, no matter what you do or what you shouldn't do, uh, what advice would you give to someone coming into it as in whatever you do, don't make this mistake? Don't don't screw yourself later. And I say that because the job you have now, you're learning. and Not many people expect very much of you. But you, you build a career for yourself. So don't steal from your employer. Don't steal from your buddies you're working with. Don't screw your busser. Don't forget the kitchen. Don't forget these people that make you the money you're making. Don't just assume it's you and these people are giving you hand over fist cash. Although they're giving it to you and they think that it's you, it's all the people behind you. So don't forget the group that makes you the money you make.
just having people come up to you at the end of the night and just saying, wow, man, like, that was incredible. You really ripped it up. And they're not even talking about the bottle flipping. Sometimes they are. But just having people take the time after and just say, man, that was incredible. Man, you're on fire. That was sick. Or something like that. Like, that's, that's almost better than, it is better than money. Like, just having really people shake your hand and really want to, you know, really come up, just approach you and say that it means a lot. Very cool. I live in Victoria, and quite honestly, even if sugar was non-existent, I could work at any venue in the city, be it restaurant, pub, nightclub, what have you. And again, it's not the flair, it's so much as the attitude and the energy that you earn from all of this, and the connections that you'll meet because you do stuff a little different, you know, because you smile a lot, because you have fun with what you do. Have fun. Don't get into it for the ego. Enjoy yourself. Treat people better than you want to be treated. Um, here's, here's something I, I, I want to ask. How easy is it to rise above being mediocre and bored in your job? What does it take to just make that step above? What so, does it take? So many people are coasting. What does it take to step from that basic level of the job to doing something exceptional such as this. Let your own personality shine through. Every, like I said before, everyone can serve a rum and coke, but someone serves it differently, or there's a reason you go back to one person, and that's a personality. It's a, it's a genuine want to be someone that I know. I want to know you. I don't want to just serve you the drink. You know, that may be our relationship. Boom, there you go. But that mystique of the age-old bartender is the listener. Even in a high-end nightclub, where you don't have a lot of time to listen, you take that extra time, and you'll never be forgotten. You never be taken advantage of for granted. Those people will wait for you. Doesn't matter if you have 30 people in that lineup, they want that beverage from you. Does that answer the question? I think so. Okay. Because I've seen people line up to get a drink from Scott instead of me. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Thank God you fall down for a living now. Just kidding. <laughs> That pretty much wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website. We've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us. We'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better. And be proactive. Go out there and make something happen in your life. But above all, enjoy your life, because you never know how long you've got. Who wants to play golf? Smart now brings you a sensational six-week program. You'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. <laughs> the 
With step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spool the profits or break everything in sight. This is a business and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it. If you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips. You've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. gives a little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out!